you pass the exam, you're like a free person. So how does that feel? It feels wonderful. It's like the best thing in the world knowing that that chapter is over and it's not. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Sharon Anuma and I'm really excited to have my friend here in Kem. I knew in Kem when she was a freshman in college. I don't remember what I was. Was I like a senior, junior? Yeah, about a senior. Yeah, so, but anyway, I'm really excited to have her here because she just recently passed all sections of her CPA exam and I really wanted to have her share her experience, share what she did, how she studied, and share some tips and studying advice for you guys out there who are currently studying. And just for the new viewers, the CPA experience is a channel dedicated to bringing you tips and tricks on how to pass your CPA exam and create a CPA career that you really enjoy. And with that said, I'll get right into it. So I'll go ahead and Kim, just tell us what you do currently and yeah, where you work. So currently I'm a consultant in a public accounting firm. Started about it's a little bit over a month now. That's good. So, before you started working in public accounting, did you intern? Like, tell us about your career and how you got to where you are. So, I actually had interned with this public accounting firm. Um, I think it was the summer after my sophomore year, and then again the summer after my junior year, which then led me into a full-time offer from them after I graduated as a senior. And um, I... The way I was filtered into the internship program to be able to do two consecutive years was through NABA. So um, shout out to NABA, join your NABA chapters at your local colleges. They're really good at um, helping minorities get into the public accounting sector. That's good. That's a very good point you mentioned, Kim, that the internship gave you a leg up to getting into public accounting firm mm -hmm. and having a full-time job that you actually like doing right now. Yeah. So with that said, at what point during your career, during this journey, did you decide you wanted to take the CPA exam? Um, I decided actually really early in my career, or my career of uh, beginning my career, if you like if you will like mm -hmm. so um i think i knew i was gonna take the cpa honestly as soon as i joined naba i mean it wasn't really shoved down my throat but i just knew it was something that i wanted to do i knew it was something that was going to further my career as an accountant and it i didn't want to stop at oh she got her accounting degree but she didn't get her cpa the statistics for black cpas is actually very very low it's actually only three percent of three so, percent of cpas are black i believe that's what the statistic was that was really shocking to me so i knew i didn't want to stop at just getting my accounting degree it's important it was important for me to push forward and to get the actual cpa license so um yeah, I definitely knew that was something I wanted to do and to pursue. That, that's good. That's a good point. And that's something I usually tell students. I'm sure I told you this when you were mm. in Maryland. Yes. Get your CPA, get it done before you start working. <laughs> yes. And just get it out of the way because it gets significantly harder if you decide to wait. And if you go and start working and you don't take the exam yeah. and you stay and just prolong the process, it just gets harder and harder. Definitely. But if you just come out of college, you still have the fresh information from your undergraduate classes, taking that exam is much more smoother. I mean, it's not an easy process, but it's significantly better if you took it right after graduation than if you waited for several years. Definitely. Okay, so in what order did you take the CPA exam? Yes, yeah, so I took audit first, mm -hmm. and I took audit first because I had just finished my audit class in the spring of 2016. So I took audit, then I took BEC business. Then, so my um, situation was different. I had an extra semester at my university, and but I made sure that before my extra semester, I got my accounting degree. So I had everything in place. That way I could begin taking the CPA. And with the extra semester, I would get 150 to get the actual license. So um, I hope you guys understand the difference in what I'm saying. You need 120 credits and your accounting degree to sit for the CPA exam, but you need 150 credits to get the actual license. So you can begin getting taking the CPA test once you have an accounting degree and 120 credits. So that's what I made sure I got done before my extra semester, took audit and business in the summer. Then in the fall, um, I took my, you know, did my fall semester. That was kind of my break from CPA, then I started up again um, in January, and I did regulation, and then um, FAR. And unfortunately, I didn't get to take the 
old far by the time i took far it was april april 2017 so i took far as the you know new exam that's something i actually wanted you to touch on a little more because i know you took some of your sections as the old exam mm -hmm. and then far was the only one you took as the new exam right so how would you say the difference is in terms of how you prepared for the old versus the new yeah. would you say it was very similar or um i would say it was pretty similar the only thing um, I used Becker materials to prepare for CPA. So Becker was really good at changing the materials mm -hmm. for the old versus the new. For example, they had already had new materials out while I was still studying for regulation, which I was going to take the old one, but the new version of Reg was already out. So they had like a dual um, interface for users. If you're setting for the old, you will click like the old link and it would be like the old interface. And if you're doing the new one, it'll be like the new interface. So I really appreciate that. When it came to FAR, um, I felt like the material I'm practicing was more in depth. I will say it was. There's a lot more material when I'm studying for the new. I don't know if that's because simply because FAR is ten chapters, or if that's because they just had more in depth material. But I, I'm leaning on the on the side that it was just more material because um, the thing about the new sections are there is more simulations, and I'm sure you know with more simulations you're not able to you're guessing is not as easy you can't like the answer is not in front of you and you can't guess you really have to pull this <laughs> out of thin air so i think there was a lot more um in-depth material when it comes to studying for the new stuff when using becker i can't speak to any other prep test that's a good point you mentioned because one thing with the change in the new exam is they're testing higher order skills so they really want to make sure that you're you understand the material you understand how to apply the concepts to information and you're just not memorizing like multiple choice questions mm -hmm. so with the new exam and with the more simulations it gives you an opportunity to really take your time while learning to really understand what the concepts are understand why things are happening and understand the principles. How did you prepare for the exam? Can you just give us in detail like how long it took you to study, when you started studying, what mm -hmm. you did, how you managed your time, how you cut off your friends and family, if if at all you cut off your friends and family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to preparing for the exam, just know anytime anyone asks you what you're doing, I'm studying. Like if I didn't have to go to church, if I didn't have to do something that my mom made me do, I'm studying. Oh, what are you doing? Study. Like everything is I'm studying. The way I study was for me, I'm the type of person that I need to see everything over and over again. The more I see it, the more I remember it. So I would read, I would go through the book um, with the lectures of Becker, Becker, like so turning the pages. And with that, they do not allow, it doesn't really give you time to read the pages because you're going with the lecturer and they're not reading every single word. So therefore, you're going with, you know, you're, you're not reading the book essentially, but you're skimming, scanning, highlighting, getting the major points that the lecturer is pointing out in the book. So that's what I do the first time for the whole entire book. And with each section, so there's chapters and there's sections. So with each section, once I've done one section of a chapter, I do the multiple choice homework inside Becker. Um, when I first started studying, I would do a whole chapter and then do all the chapter questions. That can be really tasking and like mentally challenging because although the chapter is obviously going to be related, it's a lot of detailed like intricate topics. So I would suggest doing section by section for your homework, not doing chapter by chapter. It's important to like mentally pace yourself for this you don't want to have, like overwhelm yourself is just not something that i advise so um section by section the lecture the homework lecture homework once i've completed the entire book mm -hmm. that's when i go back and i read the book personally without the lectures mm -hmm. also while i'm doing the homework um there's an option to mark questions i mark questions that i get wrong or mark questions that i got right and i don't know how why i got it right just so I can go back and, mm -hmm. um, you know, do understand and make sure, you know, just to understand and go back and do it again, make sure I get it right the next time. So after I've done that, um, I read the book one more time. I read the book, sorry, I read the book again. And that's literally me like reading each page. Um, and then with each section, once again, with each section, I go back and do those questions that I marked. I don't do all the questions. I do the questions that I've marked because now at this point, I believe like, okay, I've read detailed i've got um, advice from the lecturer so now these hard questions like let me see if i can understand it a little bit more so um after i do that i read i've read the whole entire book once 
and then I read it again. Um, for me, it's like read the book as many times as I can. So first with the lecturer, then by myself, then I, again, and hopefully I have time. And the way I broke up my study time, I'm, I guess I would try to do definitely six to eight hours of studying a day. Um, most of my time that I was studying was during the summer. So that was kind of easy because, you know, and not a lot of things are going on in the summer. You have a lot of free time. Uh, for me in my situation with not having classes um, Yeah, weekends are a major major study day Saturdays especially when I get tired. I try not to push myself too hard. I try to like I don't know maybe do multiple choice simulations um, Studying for those when I would also I would uh, redo simulations I would clear them out and redo them on the second time I would read the book and Just to make sure you know, I can rework them and get them right did you do progress tests and did you do ah, the did you yes. do the um the scheduled exam that Becker has? Yes, so the progress test I would do that after I read the book uh the first time. So after I read the book the first time, section by section, um once I've completed a the whole entire chapter, I will so you know, section by section I do the practice problems that I said I marked and got wrong. Then once I'm done the entire chapter then I would do a progress test for that entire chapter. As I'm building up, so as I've done chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, as I'm building up every day, I'm adding the amount of progress question tests that I'm doing. For example, um, let's say I've done one, two, and three now. I've read chapter one, two, and three all by myself with the lecturer. That means I'm going to do 20 questions from like I like it allows you to pull yeah. how many questions from you want mm -hmm. how many questions you want from each chapter so I pull 20 from chapter one maybe 15 from chapter two and then like 20 from chapter three mm -hmm. and combine into one and then you'll see when you're taking the exam you'll see that it's gonna flow in that order as well so I would like to as I'm building up and reading more and more chapters I build up and, and do more and more um, progress check multiple choice mm -hmm. answers sorry <laughs> That, that's good and it's important I, I really liked how you mentioned that you made it a focus that you were studying and when people asked you what you were doing you were studying because it's important to note that you're gonna have a lot of time after you graduate right you're gonna have all this time so if you dedicate a few months and tell people I'm studying and you just like literally just like cut them off it's that's how you're gonna pass right because yes. you don't need to spread yourself too thin because studying is a really challenging process it's gonna take a lot of your time it's gonna take a lot of your effort and you want to make sure you give it all, your all the first time around I'm glad you did that so you took all your exams the first time and passed all of them no actually so the first exam I took was audit and I took that in July I think I have been studying I want to say about a month and a half mm -hmm. it was six chapters so a little bit less tasking and I took it and I got a 74 <laughs> oh no that's oh yeah I do remember that yeah. yeah so that was like really like heartbreaking um oh my god that's oh my that's a pain yeah so it was like you know you're there but not quite mm -hmm. so that was the only exam I took twice everything else I passed the first time around really happy about that thank god mm -hmm. but honestly getting a 74 it didn't I mean granted I was sad and irritated honestly what pained me the most is that paying the money to take another time you know that yeah. was that's what really pained me like taking the exam again is not the worst thing in the world it's just the out-of-pocket fees the same yeah. thing. but anyways um what I learned from that is you know essentially this might this is not guaranteed but i there is a section that i need to brush up on and you know i didn't necessarily have to read the whole entire book again but if i was to just become very very you know uh familiar with a section or two like and really know that that means i would have i would definitely pass the next time because mm -hmm. you know it's not 74 percent out of 100 that's not the way this the test is graded but if I had known something like one little bit more, maybe mm. that would have put me at 75. Yeah, and that's that's a good way to think about the exam, even if you don't pass the first time. I mean, the exam itself is challenging enough for people to pass all of them on their first attempt. And even if you fail a section, just remember you can still do more, you can still study a little more, and you can pass the exam. And a lot of people have passed the exam before you, so that, that should encourage you to know that. Even if you fail, don't beat yourself down too much. Just yes. know that you have to refocus. Ref 
refocus your studying efforts to maybe a chapter that was more challenging, a chapter that you didn't study as much, and so that way you can do better on the next time you take the exam. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's important you said, so every time you re you um, reschedule or retake, you have to pay fees? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, every time you retake, okay, that's you expensive. pay, a, first of all, you pay for them to even like, it's a review, I don't even know what they call it, but it's like, you basically pay them $20 for them to even open your case. <laughs> it's like, okay. So you pay $20 and then you pay for the exam again, which I honestly think was more expensive than the first time I paid. Um, I paid for all four of my exams at once and it was about $730. Then when I went to go repay for audit, it was 190 something. And when I did the division, that was more than <laughs> <laughs> what I paid. The, you did the math. When, when I did the math. Such an, such an accountant. <laughs> I was like, this is a little bit more than I paid altogether. So with that said, you just went through the process of how you studied. Did you face any struggles while you were studying for the CPA? Um, by struggles, you mean? Like any challenges, like, oh my God, this was really hard. Like, Okay, so specific content. No, not specific, just like over general. So like for me, right, it w I studied during the summer. Mm. And it was just so hard for me to just look outside the window and see people having fun, going to the bars, just yeah. like living life and I'm inside <laughs> studying. Right. And so it was just like, dang, this struggle is real, you know? Like, cause I'm just like studying when people are having fun. But I just kind of reminded myself, the bigger picture is I'm gonna be done, I'm gonna have a life after this, I'm gonna have my CPA, I'm gonna just live like a normal person. <laughs> I'm gonna make more money too. And I'm gonna get the, pa the passing bonus. So all of that just put things into perspective for me. So like, were there any struggles you faced during that process and how did you kind of help yourself overcome? I didn't feel too much tug of war mm -hmm. with my time, um, but I think in general, like you will, I think in general, you definitely will, like I can't say it never happened. There are definitely times it happened and it just was like suck because one thing I realized quickly when I would say, okay, I'll come for a little bit, like let's say I went to go to a function mm -hmm. or something something small have lunch everything takes time and missing two three hours of studying really affects you so while you think okay you're going to just go have lunch like for me I have to get dressed for my lunch I have to drive to my lunch I have to drive home to my lunch drive home from my lunch I then I have to get myself back into study mode set my stuff up so all that time that you take you know going out it adds up and that's what takes your time like, so yeah, you think the lunch is going to be 30 minutes, an hour, you know, I can miss an hour. But when it all comes down to it, you probably spend about two to three hours in that whole, in that whole turnaround of when you'll get back to studying. And that's what I realized. And that's when I knew like, oh no, I can't, um, go out too much. Um, my parents were really supportive of my study time. Um, really flexible, understood that they asked me to do something. I would try to make time for that. If not. I couldn't but overall I kept telling myself one thing I really wanted to do was travel after my CPA mm -hmm. so I just kept telling myself you know after this I'm going to travel and I did I was really excited about that so yeah that was something I was gonna ask you now so how did you celebrate after you passed the CPA like what was your celebration yeah like, how did you treat yourself um so I didn't know that I actually had a really long lag time bef between my last exam far and the time I found out that I passed mm -hmm. uh basically the whole entire summer so I took it May 31st 2017 and then I didn't find out until like August but you're living by faith yes <laughs> I was living by faith <laughs> So then in the summer, I went to Spain, I went to Italy, oh, nice. I went to Costa Rica, I went to I saw your Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just really excited and um, you know, you finally have time and it's summertime. Luckily, everything just fell really into place, so. What advice do you have for people who are currently studying? My big advice for people who are currently studying, honestly, is to take your time. Don't rush through this. Um, if you are not currently working, start immediately, like that is a really precious time and for the most precious thing anyone has, the most valuable thing anyone has in this world is time. Like you need to give this time for yourself, time to understand, time to take it, time to study, everything is your time. So please if you're not, um, if you're in your lag mode, your six months grace period, whatever, you know, really get serious and try to get as much done as you can before you start working. And if you are working while you're studying, I suggest taking your time and really finding a balance for you. Um, I really 
I hate to see this type of like this exam stress anyone out. It is stressful, but I would just say take your time. Don't overwhelm yourself. When you find a problem that you just don't understand, you're like, even when you're reading the um, narrative for its explanation, you're like, yeah, I still don't understand. Just, you know, bear with it, move on. You know, this is one question out of how many questions they can ask you. So be faithful in yourself. Definitely take your time and ease through things. It will get like, you will get like really tense and feel like you just like it's about to come out of your mouth but literally <laughs> just like take your time trust me okay so now that you now that you finally you've passed the exam you're like a free person so how does that feel now working in the real world and you know you can just go to work and come back home and go yeah. to the gym and do something else and travel and go to happy hour how does that feel just knowing this and knowing that you don't have to go back home and study yeah. like how does it feel in perspective in hindsight knowing that you put this and you you're done with this exam in hindsight it feels wonderful it's like the best thing in the world knowing that that chapter is over and it's not going to conflict with something else um I don't know I was doing something and the other day and I was like wow like what if I had to be studying right now like I couldn't I can't even imagine coming home and studying after work like that, I can't even imagine the people who do that I really commend them but that's just a deep sigh right there I can't <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine that. So it's really, I, it's just really a relief, trust me. Because when you start work, I mean, that's scary. Work is not like, you know, the worst thing in the world. But, you know, you spent your whole day doing something, being active in one thing. And then you have to come back and now get your mind in another active thing and engage yourself again. You know, your brain is engaged for, what, 16 hours a day? That's a lot of time. You shared a lot today, in Kim. And I think people will take out a lot from what you said. Study as soon as you graduate from college. Don't beat yourself up if you fail an exam. Don't stretch yourself out too much, even if you don't understand one of the questions. Just mm -hmm. try to understand and be patient with the learning process and just trust in the process and have mm -hmm. faith in yourself and in your abilities and in God. And just slowly slowly grind it out and you'll be done and you have a wonderful life and travel to spain and costa rica and all that good stuff <laughs> that's it and i hope you guys found this video helpful thank you guys so much for watching if you guys have questions comments about studying for the exam tips on how people out there should study please leave comments down below and i'll see you in my next video thank you